Hey, listen, some of these statistics may bother musicians. I don't know if you knew that 40,000 albums are released every year. 40,000 are put into the market. And Spotify says they have 1.8 million albums. So 40,000 albums are released every year. And those are, you know, 40,000 maybe different artists. How in the world do you find a name for yourself in the music industry? My guest today is Lindsay L. We're going to go back into her discovering music and the gift that God has given her that's helped define her purpose. She just came off hosting her first season of Canada's Got Talent with Howie Mandel. She's been on the road with Keith Urban, Brad Paisley, Sugarland, and now she is headlining her own tour throughout Canada. She's from Calgary, but she's down here in Nashville where... My wife met her. They work out at the same gym. And Tina said, man, this girl has so much energy. She is so fun. You've got to have her on the podcast. So today, Lindsay L. is all heart with me, Paul Cardall. Because you took my scars, bruises and one billboard pianist paul cardall do you believe in miracles and second chances over a decade ago i was raised from the dead read paul's story the broken miracle by jd netto visit thebrokenmiracle.com hey paul hey Lindsay, how are you i'm good how are you um i'm good thanks for doing this yeah of course thank you so much for having me to my understanding you took piano lessons when you're six, but then you discovered your mm -hmm. dad's guitars. Yeah, I started playing piano when I was really, really young. My mom got my brother and I um, in piano lessons before, you know, we could barely um, really do much in the world. And when I was eight years old, it was a lot cooler to play Shania Twain songs on the guitar than, um, than classical songs on the piano. So I, um, I picked up the guitar and just haven't really put it down since, honestly. <laughs> So is a lot of it by ear? Did you take lessons? Did you? I, I took lessons probably for about four or five years when I was just starting out. You know, my dad showed me enough to like kind of get started, but then I, I started taking formal lessons. But then the rest of it was just sort of playing with great musicians and surrounding myself with people who were so incredible and um, and were amazing and, and could play like awesome things. And, um, and, and yeah, it, it all just sort of took off from there. And then when did you write your first song? I wrote my first song when I was 10 years old. Um, yeah, it was it was to my parents. It was called That Place in My Heart. And um, it was super lame at the time, but I mean, it's your first song. So what are you, what are you gonna do, you know? You need to start somewhere. Do you think it's lame now? Yes, I do. I think it's terrible. But again, it's like your first song. So what are you gonna do, you know? Um, but, but, uh, but yeah, I started writing songs when I was 10 years old. So it, it just, songwriting has become a way of life, you know, how I've learned to like process emotions and, um, and, and process things as, as we go through them. And, um, and, you know, now after songwriting for over 20 years, it feels like, um, just, just a part of, of how I live, you know? We talk a lot about that on the show is how music, if you play an instrument, um, there are so many health benefits to it and you do yeah. assess the world around you. You're able to process trauma from childhood, pro uh, all kinds of problems. I mean, that's, that's in essence why I got into it. You know, I was trying to figure out the loss of a friend and I sat at the piano and, but my first song was, it sounded like a, like a really bad Russian Nintendo bad video game. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, we all need to start somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you ever feel pressured into music? Yeah, if anything, I, I, it was always just something I gravitated towards. And um, I, I started playing shows when I was 10 years old. And so the stage just became okay. um, like home to me, you know. And if anything, I, I graduated high school a year early, went right into university because my parents were super academic and they wanted me to Wow. have a piece of paper to hang on the wall. And in my second year of business school, I was like 
the mom and dad, I can't do this. Like uh, I only have one chance to do music in life and, and this is it now I can always go back to school. And so, um, like any good musician, I dropped out of school and, um, and, uh, and, and just started touring and, and pursuing music. And, um, my mom wanted me to enroll in something. So I, uh, I enrolled in Berkeley online and ended up finishing like a diploma online, um, from them. But, uh, but yeah, music, it, it sort of chose me instead of me choosing it. It's like, um, I don't know, whenever you find something that you feel like your, your purpose aligns, um, it, it's almost like it wasn't even your choice, you know? Yeah. You don't even have to go out and ask the divine, like, is this something I was supposed to do? You just kind of know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Do you remember the first time somebody complimented you? Yeah, probably when I was pretty little. I mean, I remember playing shows when I was, you know, 10, 11 and 12 when I would play my own songs. Um, shortly after I um, turned 13, I met a guy by the name of Randy Bachman, which if people don't know Randy, he um, he was in bands like the Guess Who and BTO, like taking care of business and, um, mm-hmm. and these eyes and oh, baby, you just ain't seen nothing. <laughs> um, and Randy became like another dad to me growing up. You know, he he really sort of took me under his wing and and taught me how to write a song when I was a little girl and, and taught me um, how how to record in a professional recording studio. And so without Randy, um, I think I would have been, uh, I, I don't know, I, it just really like clicked everything into gear from such an early age. Yeah. And, um, and so if anything, having, you know, a huge belief and, and believer in, in him um, was like the thing that kind of got everything started. People just tend to come into our lives. Mm-hmm. Right time. When we're yeah. pursuing something we're passionate about, and we're just kind of like, you know, we didn't know back then we're manifesting, but we're like, yeah, much, this is what I want to do. And it's like people just tend to attract in for the good reasons. Yeah. And, and sometimes you don't even know that you're doing it subconsciously. You know, I mean, this is probably jumping ahead, but I just released a song a few weeks ago called right on time. And it's written about this very thing. You know, I, I think that it's, 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 um, it's a beautiful thing to realize that like the way we see our life unfolding and the way we see our journey is often different than the way it happens. And, yeah. you know, hindsight is 2020, but sometimes things take a little bit longer than you hoped because they end up working out better in the long run and people end up coming into your lives or opportunities end up coming into your lives right on time as they should. And it's so natural for us as human beings, especially in a society like today to feel societal pressure and to feel pressure from social media and pressure from family and friends and, and compare ourselves to that. Cause it's like, it's just left, right and center. It's everywhere we go. It's like our coworkers. um, And and, and it's hard to, to disassociate yourself to that, that idea or, or other people's timelines of how they're living their life and what is working and what is not. And, and so I just think it's such an important reminder for us to remind ourselves that like, we're doing our own thing. We're living our own life. We are on our own trajectory. And because of that, um, it, things things have a way of falling into place right on time as they should. And we just need to remind ourselves of that and believe in it wholeheartedly. Yeah. I mean, the first uh, lyrics in this, this tune that you wrote with the, some of the guys that write for Florida Georgia line is I got a friend who just got married again. I don't know what the hell that girl does. I can't even find a plus one like the <laughs> pressure you must feel in our society that you, you got to get married. You yeah. Know? I mean, shortly after I, I turned 30, it felt like all my friends were getting married and having babies yeah. and, and doing all these life things. And, um, and I, I you know, I, I wrote the song for anybody, but specifically women. I think that women are pressured so much to hit the right time in their life, the right time to be beautiful, the right time to maybe be a mother, the right time to go after the career that they want. And because we have, you know, biological clocks and, and just our, our image is, um, pressurized so much. Mm -hmm. I I feel like we constantly feel that like, Oh my gosh, I'm falling behind or, Oh my gosh, I should be doing this or, Oh my gosh, why isn't that happening? And we compare ourselves to each other when it's, it's just like, 
it's so important to remember that like nobody's doing it the right way. There's so many different right ways to do it and you're finding your own right way. Well, you seem to have a pretty good balance because, uh, you know, when you're in town, you're at the gym and that's where my wife runs in. <laughs> Tina, of course, is like, wow, she, she just has so much energy, so much uh, light. I mean, that is so sweet of her. Your yeah. wife is just so beautiful inside and out. Um, I'm glad it feels that way because sometimes it feels like, what is happening? It's falling apart. But I mean, I guess that just means we're all human, you know? <laughs> Let's go back into, um, you know, that time period with Randy Bachman, because you don't just become the host of Canada's Got Talent. You don't, you know, you've got a gold record. You have nominations for country uh, music awards. You've got, I mean, there's so much going on for you and you're headlining your own tour. I mean, did you ever think you'd be headlining? I mean, I know it's in the back of there, but did you think it would happen this early? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy when, um, you dream about goals and, and dreams. Um, I think it, it's so important and like imperative of like, you know, in the world of manifestation to like actually feel like, what would it feel like if those things happened? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I've, I've dreamed of headlining a lot. I've dreamed of headlining ever since I was a little girl. And the fact that pieces of that are falling into place feel surreal. And at the same time, I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I I want to do so much more. Like like it's um I think a natural mindset and also if you let it get carried away and a healthy mindset to like always be setting goals of like okay, but I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this because um sometimes I think our our brains can get ahead of our um r- reality and um and so it's been something that I've really had to work on to um to enjoy the moment and like really take in what's happening. And, and yeah, I'm so grateful. So much is happening right now and so many cylinders are firing in different directions. And I'm so grateful for that. But also like the, the three in me, the achiever in me is just like, okay, but where are we going next? And how are we building to this? And what are we going to do here? And how are we going to grow this in this direction? And so, yeah, I'm super grateful. It feels like the past two years, so many cool things have happened, but like the dreamer in me is just getting going, you know? So is that the, is that really like the, the strategy for everything you, you do in order to get to where you need to be is you have to be thinking way ahead now, you know, any 15 year old who thinks that they're really good and their parents are telling them they're good. People are asking them to sing, you know, they, they got to go in studio or they got to go on, you know, American Idol or Canada's Got Talent or any of these things. Um, they're thinking it's just going to happen. Um, yeah. And then react. And, and I've been told by so many people, and this is something I believe is it's better to not have any idea um, the amount of work you have to put in. <laughs> because if you had known how much work you have to be and how many no's and, and, and being let down and tears and all these things, you have to ask yourself, is this something that I really want to do? You know? Yeah, I, I agree with that. And at the same point, I'm like, I, I think it's um, really reminding yourself of that why, knowing that there are going to be days that it feels so challenging, you know, and, and maybe it is like, you know, sort of um, ignorance is bliss mindset of like not knowing how hard the struggle is going to be until you're in the midst of it. And, and does that give you like a little bit more energy to break through perhaps, but I also feel that, um, you know, preparing yourself for, um, what might happen or, or just knowing that it's like not going to be all tulips and daisies as you're walking along the road, um, is it just gives you like a different level of armor, um, when, when stuff does happen, cause it will happen. I mean, it's life and everything's not going to be perfect and everything's not going to fall into places you wanted. And so, um, I guess it's just finding what works for you. For, for me, I feel that, um, when I can relate everything back to my why of like why I want to do this and why it it means so much to me, then it sort of prepares me to, to be ready for anything. Like whether that's, uh, you know, really easy or a lot of blood, sweat and tears more than I had ever imagined. Um, 
And it, it sort of, I don't know, sets me up better for success compared to just pretending like it's all going to be fine. <laughs> but it's working. I mean, I guess it's working. Is it working? Do, do you ever feel like it's working at the end uh, of the day? I mean, <laughs> I think it's like, um, you know, you always can like look at your friend situations and be like, they're doing amazing. And then you look in the mirror and you're like, I have this, 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 this that I need to change. And so, um, you know, that not being said, like I'm, I am so grateful for everything happening right now, but it's just like, uh, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's like putting a mirror in your own situation. It's like, Okay. Yeah. I guess, I guess it's working. Is it working? <laughs> artists, 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 we are never really satisfied. Yeah. That's we, so can, true. we have moments where we're, you know, it, I have to go in and record um, what I'm doing. Um, listener does not know this yet, but I'm, I'm going actually to record a full length album. But the way I'm doing it this time is I do a lot of improvisation. So I don't have anything written. But I've got an entire film crew coming to this theater um, where I've got four or five different Stein, Steinway grants to pick from. I'll pick one. We'll tune it. I've got this Grammy winning engineer. So I'm just going to sit at the piano while they're filming for eight hours and I'm just going to create. And then we'll end up taking like the, the best, I don't know, 45 minutes and turn that into an album. But that's like, so cool. But it's not. I am frightened. <laughs> I would be so frightened too because I know what improvisation improvisation is, is right, yeah. like and like the pressure and um and also that like license to be able to create in a place that's that's so free is so terrifying. But I'm like uh, I'm proud of you. Like that takes a lot of courage and bravery to be able to like step yeah. into and be like, well. I don't know what I'm going to play for the next eight hours, but I'm going to play something like that. That takes a lot of, um, that takes a lot of courage. You have to do line upon line in order to get to the place where you envision. And then, and then what happens once you get everything that you set out for, then you go through kind of another midlife crisis in our, as an artist, you know, it's like, I got this, I've got the attention, of people in the industry. I've got the awards. I've got this. How do you maintain it? You know? Yeah. It's like, it's a weird headspace of, of, um, well, I just got to get this and then I'll be fine. I just got to get this and then I'll be fine. I just got to do this and then I'll be great. And it's like, you do those things and then you open a door that opens up into a room of 10 more doors that you're like, okay, now I got to figure out how to, how to do that. And it always, um, it always was so inspiring to me meeting like all of these A-list artists that I, you know, had the luxury of opening for and being on tour with and, and thinking, man, they have all of these things going for them. It, it must be like so much easier when you get to that point, but it's really not like the just hard work. It's just more responsibility, more pressure, more work. And it's like, but when you get to that level, you've just been doing it for so long, or you've had to deal with a level of pressure, stress, or whatever, that you get better at like managing so many things at the same time. And so I guess, I guess you just get better at it. But, um, but yeah, it's not like that ever goes away necessarily. You know, it's, it's, it's just, I guess you get better at dealing with it. Yeah. I mean, the laundry just piles up, you know, mm -hmm. over the 30 years I've been in the industry, it's not so much the you know the achievements it's knowing that you're doing and you're yeah. going somewhere and and it's not over you know um absolutely who are your inspirations who, who who are you listening to gosh i listen to um so many different kinds of music like um my favorite guitar player is jimmy hendrix and Derek trucks um i love carol king to aretha franklin i love uh john mayer obviously keith urban um i listen to like a bit of everything um but i think that's healthy you know i think that all of us listen to a no. bunch of different um artists a bunch of different genres mm -hmm. um it's it's sort of uh a good music vocabulary <laughs> to have a diverse one yeah i mean i had i not met teen i wouldn't be at keith sweat concerts <laughs> See, there you go. Genuine in the Snoop, the Snoop Dogg shows, but 
<laughs> but are there artists that you want to work with that you have? Yeah, with? gosh. Um, I would love to collaborate with Ed Sheeran one day. Um, I just think he's like such a brilliant songwriter and, you know, I think we could both like loop the cool things. Um, yeah. I would love to do something with Shania Twain. She obviously is like my idol ever since I was a little girl. Um, doing something with Shawn Mendes would be cool. Cheryl Crow. Um, yeah, it 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 would be really um, amazing to be able to collaborate with like the artists who I've looked up to too growing up. How'd you like the collab with Harry Styles and Shania? So awesome. I think Shania is so smart. Her and her team are so smart. And um, it's it's amazing to watch a female artist like ride that line of like being sexy, but being smart and saying what you mean and also having fun and like staying just relevant for as long as Shania has. It's like, it's so impressive to watch and inspiring to watch. And um, yeah, that was, that was such a cool moment. She's so authentic because I remember when she was, you know, not doing anything for a season and then Lionel Richie wanted her on yeah. his album and she, she really had to like get that confidence up again. And she mm-hmm. had dominated. She had totally dominated. Totally. You know, how do you keep your, how do you keep your confidence up? You know, you seem to be somebody who is an optimistic, energetic person. You have your moments. But how do you keep your yeah, confidence up? Yeah, I think all of us have our moments. You know, I, I am sort of an eternal optimist, but um, just like, you know, when you meet comedians, sometimes they're the saddest person in the room. Right. Um, I, I feel like the, the creative side of my life, like the, the songwriter side of me is like pretty dark at times. And I think, I guess that's what inspires good music maybe, or maybe that's what makes my other side of my personality so happy. Um, but maybe that dichotomy is what, what keeps things in check, I guess, or, or definitely makes me appreciate like being able to look at life and, and still stay optimistic about it. There seems to be a personality with every instrument, the player of the instrument. And as a lead guitarist, you know, you've got that personality. Bass players are always kind of just chill. Yeah. The easy hang, you know, drummers are intense. (laughs) Uh, Of course, lead singers are are just uh, in control all the time. It's always interesting. Um, Tell me about, Canada's got talent. You, you guys just ended a season. Is there, are you going to be doing another season? Are you going to be hosting another season? Yeah, we, we got picked up for another season. It's super exciting. Um, I, I have loved getting involved in TV and, and just seeing that whole side of things. Obviously I, I know it from like a music standpoint, but being involved in a full on production and getting to work with minds like Howie Mandel and Lily Singh, it's, it's just been um, so so incredible and, and inspiring. And, um, you know, I, I think the two worlds of music and TV like fused yeah. together, like so beautifully. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's been fun to be able to show my personality in a different way on, on TV. Is Howie from Canada? He is. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. all of the judges, um, and myself are all originally from Canada. Um, Carnell Official and Trish Stratus from WWE um, both live in Canada. And then Howie, Lily, and I um, all live in the U.S., but um, we're, we're all originally Canadian. Yeah. And you and then you, uh, I think Simon Cowell, wasn't he on the last episode? What was Yeah. That? Simon flew in for our finale, which was so cool. And he was the best. He was like the coolest and so impressed with our talent and the whole show. So it was amazing to have him with us um, and just such. Um, such a cool thing to have him advocate our, our brand and our show and, and everything we built. And so I'm so excited about season two. I cannot wait. It's so cool. You're working with these people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's just amazing to be around like really smart minds, you know, and, and be able to, to pick up on how they think and how they view the world. It's, it's probably one of my favorite parts of my job. That's awesome. So your tour this summer, you've already started. Yeah. Yeah. We're, you're in between dates right now. We're headed back out on a bunch of festivals this summer. Um, I'm getting to go back to Europe. We're, we're um, headlining some shows in Germany. I'm touring with the Cadillac three in the UK. We'll be going back to Australia later this year. So it's, uh, it's exciting to get some international touring. And again, um, and uh, I'm, I'm just excited to go out and see everybody. 
because when I moved to Nashville, it's just, it's incredible the number of Canadians that totally dominate and are, are down here and back and forth and back and forth. And yeah, uh, it's, it's amazing. So, Hey, well, thank you for being part of it. I just wanted to introduce all the listeners to Lindsay L. I just appreciate you having me on Paul. I'm, I'm such a fan of, of your brand, obviously, and your audience. You're such an incredible musician. I cannot wait to hear what you're going to do improvise thing in a theater for eight hours um yeah please like if people are listening go check out right on time come say hi on socials um yeah. i'm i'm pretty active on all those so um yeah come by say hi very cool all right Lindsay, thank you so much awesome thank you paul <laughs> chat later bye all right bye because you took my scars bruises and one billboard pianist paul cardall do you believe in miracles and second chances over a decade ago i was raised from the dead read paul's story the broken miracle by jd netto visit thebrokenmiracle.com